slightly mixed feelings. I mean, a lot of the things he wrote to me about, we weren't in dispute about. Uh, and it's always helpful to have intelligence and information from people who are out on the ground, no matter who they are. So I don't have any worries about that. Um, I think where you stray into territory where it appears that he's trying to get government to change policy, then I think that's more difficult. And I think that's also an area where there is more of a, a right for the public to have a, an indication at the very least that these things are being said. So you think it's, it's better that we know, although you don't think the letters in themselves are that contentious? Certainly, I, I don't recall any of the letters he sent to me being particularly contentious. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, but I do think, I don't think, if, if, as I say, if it's about an attempt to get government mm. to change, elected government to change its policy, then I think you're in the public arena rather. Because, of course, the government has now, the, the current government has now changed the rules so that there is absolute privilege now for the monarch and the heir to the throne. They can write as many letters as they like and they will never be disclosed. Yes. Well, you're back in the territory of journalistic leaks, aren't you? So, I mean, you wouldn't back that particularly. You don't think there should be an absolute... I can, I mean, I'm, I am naturally somebody who understands or who, or who believes, shall we say, um, that government has to be able to do some things in privacy. Um, well, if, if the government has changed the rules so that there's absolute confidentiality, they have. Um, but I, I think even for the royal family, the position is really rather the same as it is for, say, all politicians, that you can never assume that something you say or write will never be disclo disclosed. Because I assume, really, that the people who are worried about this, the Guardian and others, they would say, well, you know, this man is the future head of state. Mm. Inevitably, he will be listened to more seriously than if you or I wrote off to a minister and said, oh, this is what we think about something. Yes, that's true. Um, and I think, probably, people's attitude to it will be influenced to some extent, partly what they see that he said and partly by whether or not they think that he would try to interfere with government policy when he becomes the king. Um, and if they think he would, I think more people will be worried about that than would be otherwise. Probably the most interesting letter of this bunch is that he wrote to the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, about the standard of helicopters being used by the armed forces and suggested that uh, the soldiers were being asked to do a job that they weren't equipped for. Well, you'd, you'd have to ask Tony, but I think it's entirely possible that that was not regarded as unhelpful. If it was telling government something they weren't hearing from elsewhere, but they ought to, they ought to know was at least a possibility. Uh, you know, information, intelligence is always valuable to government. If you look, uh, not involving you, but involving uh, Prince Charles's opinions, uh, things like uh, changing the extension to the National Gallery or uh, perhaps the government finding some room for complementary medicine, things like that. Do you think he has been influential? His opinions have uh, changed the way the countries are run? Um, I find it a little hard. I know no more about that than any other member of the public. Um, certainly, I think if I were a minister uh, and finding that I was getting pressure because of that, I would, I would, not, uh, I would not be very happy about that. Um, but I think most of us mm. uh, in that period um, either were in agreement broadly with his approach or um, if we weren't, I think he wrote to David Blunkett about grammar schools and David was quite blunt about the fact that yes, well, it's interesting his point of view, but no, it doesn't change government policy. The Queen never speaks out. No. Uh, do you think it would be a good idea if uh, King Charles, when he does become King Charles, were to follow that example? I think certainly it makes much more clear the difference between a constitutional monarch and an elected government. Margaret Beckett, thank you.